my name is Tao. I work at BizStudio as an engineer and re researcher, especially in machine learning. And um, my, my primary job there is um, to force computer to do things. It's just programming, programming. <laughs> okay, I, today I've come to tell you about um, a story, how I do AI there. Okay, we are gonna be a little bit. Where's the internet? Where's the internet? It's coming. Okay, let me. So B Studio, yes. Um, B Studio is a gathering of, of creative technologists who are who want to add some society into a country, into this country. I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean some word to add some excitement to this society. So and as and apart from VR, AR, and games, we also do some AI. Why? Well, honestly, I don't know. We just finished uh, the video first. Um, I often hear my boss and the company back then talk about um, fascination, creative imagination, and stuff like that. But you see, I am a researcher here in like in 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 a few like ten years. So you think I'm still exciting when excited when someone show me some neural network doing some classification? No, 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 no. It's kind of like oh again, that was like boring. So I have a different goal here. <laughs> my goal is that you see. BitStudio is a, is a startup. Sometimes we, we don't have much data to work with. Sometimes we, don't have, sometimes we have data, but we don't have manpower to process it. So even if we have manpower, sometimes we don't have time, right? If you don't have time, what will happen if a customer comes and asks to see a prototype really quick? What, can we, what are we going to do? I think these things pose a challenge that make me excited to do um, AI. So. That's the reason why I do AI. I want to do AI why, why all this thing has limited why resource. I want to achieve goal using AI with minimal effort. So that's the reason for my topic, AI for slacking. And yeah, agenda here. I have to put this slide so that when I come back and take a look at the presentation, I know what I'm up. Um, roughly what it's about. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk is going to go a bit, uh, a little philosophy about what is AI and the stuff, something like that. And I'm going to go cover some use cases for in, uh, the case study that we work with AI at BizStudio. And then we'll talk about the prospect here, why AI for slacking. That's great. So, slacking, huh? You know this word, right? It's been lazy, use eff less effort. So, why slacking? You see, I think. Like half of you here is a machine, le machine learning practitioner, right? So it's not about, you know, you let machine run while you slack off, take a coffee, stuff like that, but because you, know, you kind of like have an excuse for your boss because, because, you know, we are working, but just not human intervention, we are machine learners, right? That's not it. But unfortunately, we also, I also have a trick to let you get back to your seat later on. So just bear with me to the end, right? So, if I take a few steps back a little, why AI for slacking? Why AI? What is AI? What is intelligence? So if I go asking people around anywhere, a hundred of people, you're going to get like a hundred of answers for definition of AI. What, what, isn't that like frustrating? A hundred of answers for a hundred of people? Like, is AI something that's subjective? Intelligence is something that's so subjective? But no, science doesn't work on subjective things. The reason why, if you take a look at the, the big quote here, you, you see some, some of the big names here, right? So the reason why, they just seem to agree on something, like in the, in the, I highlight in the rule. Um, what they agree is they use AI to, to do something. That is to success, to achieve some goal, right? That's this, something they, they share in common. But, but the different, the thing that makes the thing apart is why, why are they doing that? Some people say for limited resource, some people say for um, uncertainty, large amount of problems, something like that. Because they are scientists, they have different, when, when, they, when you do science on something, they have to define the scope of the work first, and they have different scope. And for here today, my scope is about limited resource. 
that's why um, I'm talking about <laughs> today. So um, what's the resource for human? Usually, um, if you take a look at here on, on the left, on, on my right, on your left, you see some, um, the first thing is Einstein field equation, Einstein version, which is not correct, and some, an euler lagrange equation, and a, a Latin quote, which means, um, I take from NASA, my, my favorite one, which means, um, from hard work to the stars. We have to use memory to, to, to kind of like remember symbols here to understand all these things. And on the right, we have like a Rubik's cubes here, right? What you have to spend to solve it? Time, right? So memory and time, or space and time in computer science work. If I take a look at what is the real world problem here, that the categorizing to these space and time needed to solve. Um, image recognition is um, space. Optimization things is time, for example. So if I have unlimited space and time, I can solve everything. But we don't. That's why AI, we use AI. AI is here to help you to minimize this, the space and time required for, for solve this problem, right? So um, if, if AI is here to solve what's a space and time, but what is the space and time in non computer science world? It's this effort, right? We, when, when we use memory, we have to learn a lot of things to, to get into our memory, and we have to spend a lot of effort, to, to, um, a lot of time to solve something that hard. Like, these, these two things are like effort. So, yeah, I just put some doodle here because it's life so empty. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, let, let's get to case study, okay? So, all, all the following work here is um, my work at Beat Studio my work, and, and um, my part of it is um, my, in, my research interests, not related to Bit Studio, but um, kind of like I want to apply to, to, to the field. So yeah, this first, this, this first project we think um, we come up with when we use AI to, to um, creative technology at Bit Studio, we want to do something um, Installation. We want to create some installation where anyone can come to play. So then we think, why, why, why don't we create something that um, people can use their hand to play? This hand shadow, is this playing? I'm sorry, video cannot be loaded. I'm sorry. Again. And here comes the machine learning version of Shadow Play. Um, we use convolutional neural network to, to, to recognize hand shadow and use computer vision to morph the hand shadow, how to recognize it, to, to, to create animation from it. We want to remind users of the all good feeling of when they were young and they have like a playing with, um, all, they have all the time in the universe and they're playing with their hand shadows.
So um, the project is so the, the, th the thing that use less effort because it's very easy to implement and we don't have to go for like commit a commission to, to, to do the stuff. And yet it creates a profound happiness in, in users who come to play. So it's kind of like we do less, yet we get more. At least that's what my boss say. I know about that. Right? <laughs> so, and then we have another project here. Um, it's about AI so creating um, representative emotion from hand drawing. So we want to use AI to recognize how much percent of, of, of emotion, like anger, fear, joy, disgust, um, and the last one, what is it? I don't remember. Sadness, yeah. To how much percent associated with their hand drawing. stop it here. So this is just another CNN project, I mean, convolutional neural network, which is not so hard to implement, and, but it's so fun to play. I mean, we, already, we even have like a pit of ball where we're projecting the light there to kind of like mimic the, the sea of emotion where people can jump in and immerse themselves in feeling. What, what the challenge about this thing is that everything has to be done automatically. We don't, um, we, we kind of like avoid, we want to avoid using human intervention as much as possible. So when, when the player comes, they will just um, activate the, 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 the monitor to, to just drawing something. And then the program will also prompt asking user what is the, their, their drawing associated with certain emotion that prompt up onto the screen for the training. And later, if, if more and more players come to play with the system, the system is getting better and better at um, recognizing um, emo emotion. So um, just, just those two things. Um, we, you see that we use a lot of computer graphic stuff, right? Creating graphic is fun, but if you have to do it every day at work, that's become like kind of tedious job, right? So we have an idea. Why don't we use AI to help our artists in, in doing that job? So we do some research in artificial creativity and the first project here is, um, if I don't mistake, is Tide and Fur, right? It's not so good because in the early state, but um, the, the thing is, usually the conventional Tide and Fur is um, it's good to get, going to be taking a long time. It's, 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 it's optimization based. You have to like optimize until it's good, right? But um, what we try to do here, we want to make it in real time. So we use metric decomposition to do Tide and Fur, but um, what we learned from using matrix decomposition for, to do style transfer, don't use matrix decomposition for style transfer. It's not that really good, but um, the thing is, it's fast. It's just matrix multiplication between um, in, in, inside, but um, it's, 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 the thing is, the, this, this is like two or three years project, but after the GAN come out, everything is GAN. GAN is fast, GAN is good, so why don't we use GAN? But, we don't use scan for site hunt for anymore because many people already use it. What what do you what do we use scan for? Oh, I'm sorry. The scan is a generative adversarial network. Um, some of the speaker already introduced it, so I, I I I'm not gonna go much into the scan here. So we use scan for generating emotion. I mean, sorry, animation from single still image. From we want to like have a system that assists artists. Like um, if it would be nice to have a system that that like given an input image to, to generate like a bunch of serious animation so that we, we can like know exactly what is going on, what's going to happen if we like um, start doing a lot of stuff, defining the project here. We want a prototype of animation very, very quickly. So what, we, what we've done here is that we take our STM and, and the GAN and stuff and take the first input image, which is still image, and then put into RSTM and GAN to generate and high emotion and her animation. So this work has been demonstrated, the, the early set of this work has been demonstrated in SIGGRAPH Asia 2017 in Bangkok here, as, as a next version of Shadow Play. You can see from the slide, from presentation. It's getting some kind of like mix between dog and, and deer. <laughs> but. Yeah, 
I'm sorry, I could cut each other. I have much time. So here we use AI for reduced human effort. What about I use AI for, I mean, I use reduced effort to create AI. It's going to be like meta slacking. Less effort for creating AI is even lesser effort to, to do things, right? So let's talk about image classification and recognition. Given a, an image, sometimes we don't just want to know what's in there, but we want to know where, the location, location of the optic inside the image. So um, to train this model, it's going to take like, you know, labels, right? And, and label is, in this part, if you want to predict where, the label is where, it's location of optic in the image. So can I use AI to assist um, making labels? It turns out that yes, you can use, um, we can use AI to assist um, creating labels. So the vid uh, video is a great source of data, right? They have many, many frames and, and, and we can, like, if, if, I, if I can somehow tracking object in a video from the first, I mean, the first frame, the human can keep input where the, where the object you want to see and uh, the rest of it, let, and let AI that track the objects in video and let the video play and AI generate all the location of the, the frame. That will be very convenient for us to, to generate a lot of data with label data for, for the videos. So yeah, I turn to my, my not my algorithm, but um, it's my favorite algorithm. It's called um, Correlized Correlation Filter, which is, um, you see, in this, I like this algorithm so much. It, it, mathematics is really neat in the paper. It's my, one, of, one, one of my best algorithms so, I've ever read so far. Despite all the deep learning stuff, all the, again, nothing compared to this paper. I, I recommend you to go and check, about, check it out. I mean, it's really, really good. It, it's treat everything as so machine learning, and every pixel in there is machine learning, and they use, um, the cyclic matrix and cyclic matrix can be transformed using a full, fully transformed to create a really, really fast linear system, which they don't even have to use GPU for this. So, it is for tracking. And then we have another project. Instead of tracking to create more levels, why don't we get more data? I'll, I'll let you see the project first. The thing is we want to use machine learning for, for telling people fortune. In this case, it's, um, we work in collaboration with um, SCB Digital Venture to, to, to make a system that um, look at the face and tell, tell the user fortune in entire Kong Ngoheng. You know, as a, as a scientist, you, if the first time I heard about this project, it's gonna like, what? How can you like mix them together? I mean, th this is pseudoscience. You you don't mix pseudoscience with science, right? It just doesn't make any sense. I should describe my boss. And then my boss, said, okay, if you're not gonna do it, I'll find someone else to do it for you. I was like, okay, I'll do it. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'll do it for you. So it turns out that uh, this project isn't so subjective. I mean, Ngo Heng has has kind of like statistic. They use the width of the eye, the mouth, and the position of, of face to, to, to they, they put this thing into the, some rules that, that makes some fortune prediction. And that's just good enough for me. That's kind of like objective. What if I create a machine learning system that scan the face and locate the objects in the face, like um, the position eyebrow, the eye, nose, mouth, something like that, and fit into the, this loop? Boom, I get a machine learning system that cre that uh, predicting going for, for for people. It turns out that um, you can do this with face. We have our, we, we can take this data from from um, Kaggle, face recognition. But um, the first time I ran this project, it's I uh, just use CNN as as usual. But the result is not that workable because sometimes they just um, lost track of the position of stuff. So I, I think differently. You see, human face is kind of like symmetry, right? If you can swap, you can like switch side in the mirror and you, it's still human face, right? It's, it's not like other example here. It's very, very symmetry. So I can exploit that features of human face to get more data. 
like if I extract around eye, left eye and right eye, and flip them, instead of just one eye, I mean one eye per one eye per one person, I get two eyes. And it's because the same eyes, the left and right eye, I can just use the same model for breathing eye, breathing eye position and, and stuff like that, just, just by flipping. That's really convenient. And, I can, I, and also I can do something else with, um, with the position of the side of the face and the stuff, something like that. So, so what I've been discussed so far is like hacking to make things use less effort, right? But about why don't we this, this design model from ground that doesn't require much effort to do? So the first model here that I um, what what want to discuss is um, just Thai word um, optical character recognition. Um, uh, Thai optical character recognition is just like taking a picture of taking a, an image of character. I want to identify what character in in there. In this case, I represent character with numbers. So I want to design a system that scan line because sometimes the, the image has unspecific length. If I scan line, I don't have to care about the size of the input when the when, when machine is running. So at this time step, the, the, the model will just read the line here and decide whether it is found a character or not. So far, so good, nothing so fancy, right? But you see, usually when you train the model for OCR here, you cannot acquire a lot of pre-processing for the data, right? Because, because um, you have to like split out, find separation, takes each character from the image and assign it with label and, and a lot of them and then put this data, this topo to train the model, right? That's not very convenient. How about I want to do end to end? I want to um, just put this thing. Uh, one is um, the image. The other is just a sequence of number without telling without telling what each character looks like. Can I do that? I mean, human is very good at this, right? Can you solve this problem? If I ask you what's the value of A, B, and C, can you do that? Can you assign number, the correct number, character to the A, B, and C? Yeah, right? Given enough time, it's not that hard. If human can do, why can't machine? Right, so, so I have to, so I designed a model that has to be when, when I decide this model to take the end to end, it has to be a little. I have to be more a little careful, try to make sure that everything is differentiable, right? So the system during the training, the system would just like like when classification, it would read the line, and then decide whether at the position of reading, it has found a character or not. If it finds a character, it then we will put that character into the list, and I use listed, this list to compare with the result, with, with the label list that I have in, uh, for training. Everything is good. Oh, yeah, and the accuracy of this model is like 95% on several fonts, but, but I didn't like op optimization further because this is just for experiment. I, I don't care about much about um, Accuracy. So then, if I reduce the effort to, to, to do labeling, why don't I just remove labeling completely? Can I do that? When, when humans do image recognition, we don't require much uh, you know, data, thought. we don't require much training. I just say, okay, if, I, if you can fire a panda in here, can you? Can you fire a panda in here? Yeah, you can do it, right? I mean, you don't even have to train or even one-shot training, no. I mean, human can do it with, like, easily. No, no training at all. Why don't I just, um, just create a model that doesn't require training when, 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 um, when I want to do, make it do um, image recognition? I would just give it the image I want, and example of character, example of object I want to find in the image. And let it do the less, learn to do the less. If I want to do multiple class recognition, I would just give, it, give them multiple class and let, let's see whether it can, which class come out the best match from the input image. 
So essentially what it's doing is, um, first the model will guess what portion of space in the input that contain the object that, that it want to find, and then it try to align this thing and compare with the um, cl output class that is given, if, and report the, the matching rate here. The matching rate will be used feedback to the system to refine, to refine the, the guessing position at the beginning. Let's see the result. Oh yeah, so um, this is our STM, and at each time step, as I said, it will output the parameters and perform matching and getting matching rate back. Um, you you might notice that the matching rate here is not differentiable, so the re that is hard for 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 a model like this. So essentially, what I train the model to do is it's trained to learn how to do reinforcement learning by gradient descent by itself. So let's see the result. This, you see that the result is like the model tried to move step by step at a time until it finds location of object in the image. It's, it's not that bad. But if you take a look closely, you find that it's kind of like clever when doing so. You see, at the beginning, it was hard to stretch on one dimension to find, to sense the matching rate. Why only one dimension? Why don't just straight in all direction? Well, if they do that, it's gonna, it's gonna, if they, if they do that, they won't know where the um, gradient come from, right? That there's no direction. If they just increase direction and everything's come out, they, they just fail to detect direction where the, the gradient is coming. So that's that's why they just straight on one dimension. And this, these all this thing, all these techniques of stretching one dimension is learned by itself to do. By itself, I didn't like supervise it to do it anything. It's just learn to be clever at searching. It's like very interesting to see how how the model learn. But uh, yeah, it takes very very long time to train this model because um, it's kind of like reinforcement learning. It had to take a, a little very long um, trial to, to to learn one trial. And yeah, so my my trick here to get you back to the seed when, when you have to train this, this kind of model. So you see, when you train long machine learning stuff, and it's going to take a long time, and instead of just slacking, what's going to happen in the end, right? Is either the results is good or not good, right? So if it's good, then you're happy. Then nothing happened. But if it's not good, you're going to go back into the course and figure out what's, what's wrong, right? Then why, why don't you take the time? Use the time when you wait for it to get a result to debug the code. I mean, it's, it's just eventually you have to do it anyway while you have to wait, right? So, so instead of just waiting for, 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 for the model to train to the end, I always just take, a, take back, convince myself that it will be wrong, it will be bad, and then find something to, to fix it. Often, I, I, I always find back during that time, which is very, very useful thinking. Anyway, the prospect of AI for slacking. So, oh yeah, remember Mr. Joran in the morning session say what, what he used um, 1080 for training all the stuff, right? I use 970, which is much slower. So, yeah. But, but the thing is, um, doing machine learning doesn't have to be on GPU always. You can use CPU training machine learning. It just takes a long time, but usually when you develop a model, the time you, you use to kind of like iteration to find new models is usually longer than the time you're training. So you don't, don't restrict yourself to the GPU here. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, and what, what does it mean by slacking? Thank, thank to slacking. Thank you. Thank for, to people who make making AI slacking. We kind of like having AI for all people. Anyone can do AI. Back in the past, AI is just for a big company, right? And, um, or government research project. But, but now, because of that, we, everyone can do AI. But this means it, it will reduce humanity effort as a whole to move forward, right? But what about we, we do like um, slacking for slacking, meta meta slacking, slacking for slacking for slacking? That's what we lead to. It's, it's, Will, will it lead to um, artificial general intelligence? Because this, in this scenario, it's like I ask 
I slacking, asking AI to do, AI will find some slacking way to do thing. It's kind of like headache to think, but um, yeah, but don't worry much about it. I mean, AI won't be danger because less effort AI here doesn't mean that we ignore thing. We, we, we use less effort because we put more thinking into do AI, right? And, and, that, and that part of thing is, made, I think, important here because to make flagging AI, we must understand how AI works, right? So that we can tweak it to tune it to, to make it a little, use less, less effort to do things. So not just you know taking AI stuff from the internet and, and download it and run it in the browser. That to me it's kind of that kind of like irresponsible a little. But um, you just go back and read the paper how it works a little. That, that to prevent it for if it's, if something wrong, you kind of like know what's the root cause, the, the reason why it's wrong. Not just um, this model fails so it um, sucks. I'm gonna find some, something else to run on. Then, yeah. So that, that's in the end. Thank you.